My name is Antoine Freitas Puy. That's my name. I was poor, I'm Portuguese. I was born on a small little island in the middle of the Azores called Santa Maria. And basically, there from birth till the age of five, but Santa Maria was a very poor island. We didn't have electricity. We didn't have running water. So basically, it's not much, right? You basically lived off the land and you survived, which made, and it was a Catholic based. So you, you basically were Catholic and you, you, you went to church every Sunday and you, we did, the, I can remember doing the rosary every night as a family, we would sit down and we do the rosary basically every night, right? And, and that was life. And the one stipulation from the Catholic church was that when you came to church on Sunday, that you had to wear shoes. That was kind of a stipulation. Couldn't go to church without wearing shoes. The rest of the time, we didn't really have much shoes, so you were good. So that was it. So we were raised Catholic. I got an uncle that was a priest. I got an aunt that was a nun. And I always thought somewhere along the line that I would probably be a priest. That's where I thought. I remember my, my uncle, who we met a couple of weeks ago. He's 85. He's, he's now, he left the Catholic Church. He kind of retired, got married, um, had a couple of children, has two boys. And I got an aunt, my aunt that was a nun. She, uh, she also, she didn't leave, but she kind of did her duty as a nun and then left and got married and had a, had a daughter also. But the expectation was that we would always be Catholic. My dad was, mom, my dad and mom, both, we always went to church at least once a week. If we went on vacation, if we went anywhere, we always found a church. Right, so it was it was very much Catholic uh, of that expectation. Um, then, when we was five, we we emigrated to, to to Canada, and we moved to BC, a little bit kind of central north, north uh, let's say call it central BC, and kind of in earlier teens, uh, life there was there were certain groups, and I, I knew, like, I'm going to turn question three to two because I guess one of my one of my verses that I look at now is, and I, I think it, like, you don't all of a sudden, when you're 18 or 20 or 30, I think start hearing God talk call you, right? I think very much earlier on, God is calling you. So. My, my favorite verse these days is this, so that uh, Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So in my early teens, you know, as an early teen, you, you know, you've got a lot of energy and a lot of ideas. And, and I, kind of, I knew as the people I was hanging out with, I knew where we were going, but I also knew where it was a, is something in my mind that was telling me you don't really want to go there, right? You don't really want to go there. And I knew that in the end, my dad would kill me anyways, right? So it was a safe bet not to go there. So when I was 15, we moved to Ontario. Somewhere along the line, my dad, I've got a brother and a sister. My dad figured, okay, we should, we had much more family here in Cambridge. So we, we moved to Cambridge, right? And I can remember uh 15 it was going to to glenview high school and I, I can remember being in that class and thinking wow students are actually listening to the teacher this is just amazing right it was just a different and, and i could look at some of the groups and i could think those, those are not the groups that i want to be in because i know exactly where they're going to go right so, and, and, and all the while, that's why this verse to me says, then faith cometh by hearing. Because in that kind of transition, I started reading, reading the Bible, right? We were in as the Catholic, uh, went to uh, Catholic uh, elementary school. And so they, they give you this little like Gideon Bible with the, um, 
the New Testament, the Psalms and the Proverbs and a little bit. So I was kind of reading that, right? And I, and I was reading it and it, um, so I kind of started reading it because I, I, all along the while, I think God is calling you. And, 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 and you're kind of going there by faith. That's what it is. And then he's calling you to read his word. And it slowly starts to click in. So it slowly clicked in. And then as, as Lola mentioned, the, uh, I went to Conestoga College and Brother Frank Abel was my uh, physics teacher, professor. And he, um, I can always remember in his, in his, in his, 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 where he had his, his desk, he had these little slots of pamphlets. So, so I knew that Frank was religious, all right? Um, he was religious, so I, I thought that was great, and I found that interesting. And then I can remember Monday morning, one Monday morning, you know, we were in the cafeteria with the uh, classmates, and, and they said, did you see uh, Frank Abel on TV? He was on TV. Like, I guess it was a show, Global, whatever it was, right? They, they had the, uh, this is your Bible, I think. And I thought, wow, if Frank was on TV, he must know his Bible, right? So then that's kind of how it, I, I talked to Frank and he, some, I don't know, Ray, did, did we know there was an Old and New, old and new Testament in, in the Catholic Church? Because we never had Sunday school. So there was a new and old in the Bible, I don't know. I guess I didn't know that. And Frank kind of introduced to me that there was an Old and a New Testament. And we kind of went through and I thought, wow, this is really good. So that was college and we studied a little bit and then um, graduated and a few years later um, a Jehovah Witness showed up at our door and I thought you know what because I always kind of admired him um, but because I was starting to read the Bible and, 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 and Frank said you know you got to get yourself a Bible and I got a Jerusalem Bible and I started reading you know the Old Testament the New Testament and I thought more the more I read it the more and I, you know but we're still going to the Catholic Church. And the more I read it, the more the, what I was seeing in the Catholic Church wasn't quite making sense. So more question it, question it. And then the Jehovah Witness came to our door and I said, I got to give Frank another chance. And then I got a hold of Frank and he invited us up for dinner up in Shelburne and we did that. And then he, uh, he put us into con contact with uh, Brother Colin and sister, sister Kathy Badger from Brantford, and we started studying with them. And as Lola mentioned, less Catholic Church, more, and we and we and we questioned the priest on it, and we studied with the Jehovah Witnesses. Then, in the end, you know, the Catholic priest kind of when we questioned him on the Bible, he said, you know, Genesis is kind of more of a storybook. You know, it was written as a kind of a guidance document. It's not really inspired, and I thought, okay, that kind of knocks the Catholic Church out because, you know, to me, that faith is by hearing God was calling, and to me, back then, even though, like, the Word of God was inspired, like it was true. It wasn't a fairy tale book that someone had kind of written stories for the, the people to, to live as a society. To me, that, that wasn't there. So, and I think um, kind of Lola kind of filled in and we just studied, studied more with the Christadelphians and were baptized and, and that was that. So that kind of goes with what my favorite, uh, my background and my verses. And I think the most exciting thing about my, our walk in the truth or the walk with God is that it is, I, I see that like without God and, and God kind of talking to us and helping us along, I, I find the most exciting thing is I, I don't think I, I would have probably survived, right? That God, because you go into life and you make mistakes, right? And when you read God's word and you listen to God, you realize that making mistakes is part of life, right? Nobody goes through life without making mistakes, okay? And, and, and then you look at the examples of David 
And you look at the examples of, let's say, Paul, Saul, and, and you look at those and you, and you realize, you know, that it's God's word is written in such a way that, you know, when you, when you, when you look at Rahab, right, and, and, and you look at kind of where they came from and, and kind of what they went through and, and what they became, you, you see that, okay, being human is, 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 is natural. To make mistakes happens, but you learn from them and you, and you pray to God and you have that faith that God is listening to you and that he's helping you and he's guiding you. So to me, that's the most exciting thing about my walk in, in Christ. Um, five, we've answered. The most convincing thing, I think, I fe- about the Bible, I think is one, as people have mentioned, is, is prophecy and, and all that stuff. But it's, it's, it's also, it's, it's written for a person to live their lives, right? It's, it's not about being perfect, it's, and it's, you know, like the law is in there, but it, it, it's about having faith that, that God, it, it's written that, okay, if you have faith, you kind of in those things that are, and, it, and, it's, and it's like it's not seen, but you know that God is there. God is there, and, he, and he's guiding you along that life, along your life. Um, if somebody were to, to if, if uh, somebody wanted to know more about God's word, I would say it would be to to sit down, read it, right, read it, and if you know the more and more interest would be to come out to our Bible class and come out to our lectures. Go uh, there's online courses right now. There's learn to read the Bible. There's a whole variety of things. But it's, it, it's, it's one of those things that I think that um, it would all depend on their level of understanding of God's word. Because when, when, when you say it's Nehemiah 3, verse 5, right? For some people, like it's in the New Old Testament. And, and for people that are, that are kind of coming into the truth, It'll take them half an hour to find that verse, right? They struggle. So it's, it, for me, if, if they were wanted to know more what we believe in, it would be about, okay, we believe in God's worth. And that's what I have.